the deputy president dr william samoy arapoto has summoned five cabinet secretaries to a meeting in karen and four of those cabinet secretaries are allied to president uhuru mugai kenyatta the deputy president has summoned them in his capacity as the chairperson of ibec the intergovernmental budget and economic council but i can predict certain things which are likely to happen the four cabinet secretaries allied to president uhuru kenyatta are not going to attend that meeting for several reasons because number one the, the deputy president intends to use that meeting for his political objectives number two it's not the first time the deputy president is chairing this particular committee meeting and this cabinet meeting cabinet secretaries have been attending but this time they are making the invitation public and because of that they'll view it as being political let me just read for you the invitation before we go there who are some of these cabinet secretaries who have been invited to this meeting there is the cabinet secretary for national treasury ukuru yatani has been invited he hosted the azimio la umoja for the northern kenya then there is professor george magoha if you remember the moment president ruki nyata kicked out rashid echasa makoha took over so he's been invited to that meeting the cabinet secretary for agriculture peter munya has also been invited peter munya and william ruto are fighting political wars if you remember the hotel lamada saga peter munya was one of the people who were accused by the deputy president so i don't think he will be willing to meet or to honor this someone then there is the transport cabinet secretary James Masharia again one of the guys who was accused by the DP I don't think he will be able to attend and the last person is the devolution cabinet secretary Charles Keter of course Charles Keter will definitely attend because he's a key ally of the deputy president Dr William Samoe Ruto according to the letter of invitation the letter reads the purpose of this letter is to inform you that the next full council meeting will take place on Monday 22nd November at the office of the deputy president current office at 9 am so this meeting will take place on uh, on uh, this meeting will take place on the 20 it will take place on the 22nd just a few days before president ruki nyata also chairs the jubilee ndc national delegates conference meeting where the deputy president will be removed as the deputy party leader of jubilee party now let me explain to you guys why these guys are not going to attend this particular meeting and for you to understand so well the intergovernmental budget and economic council is chaired by the deputy president even this year they have met and i remember for if you follow the politics in this country there's a time last there's a time this year when jonathan mweke was actually caught on camera lying about the deputy president and this particular meeting, meeting. listen in very briefly before we continue when the deputy president was working he used to chair an organization called ibec intergovernmental budget and economic council which was him as the chair and the 47 governors i can confirm here because i attended some of those meetings when governor kidero was not around that the counties got their money on time 95% of the time in the 5 years i was in office after the handshake that committee has never met that committee has met close to it, it has met because it's the one that determines the revenue share no, no, no. budget it, it isn't the last it, it, this it, it isn't the last meeting that was held agreed on how much money was going to the counties in this budget that's not the committee that that that, that checks uh... it was chaired by the deputy president ibec yes 
So Ibeck, he has chaired Ibeck this year. And he chaired Ibeck last year. I bet Unless you before. say that he was sitting in that committee, but... Uh, Somebody I, else was chairing. Yes. I, <laughs> I think also when it comes to honesty, stand by what you have done and stand by what you've said. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And that's why I'm saying, even when it comes to the deputy president saying, okay, so I was doing very active in the last uh, term, but I'm not very active in this term. This is a story written on the standard by Rosalind Obala this year, uh, 11th of February. And it was after the meeting of IBEC. Like if you're governor, the photo here of uh, like uh, governor director Moreithi, the deputy president and treasury ceo sukuria tani at the 14th ordinary session of ibec where they agreed to increase this year's uh, allocation. allocation to the counties to 409 billion shillings see they beat see he chairs okay i stand i stand no, no, no. I, I stand corrected uh, so why are we having all these issues if all those things have been agreed you should tell us and, 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 no, why do i strongly believe that this meeting will be boycotted by some of the cabinet secretaries allied to president uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. number one i think the deputy president is out to test the loyalty of some of these cabinet secretaries otherwise he would have used the same channel which he has always used to convene this meeting the reason he's making it public is to throw all, all everything to the public to the public court so that the public can decide so that some of these cabinet ministers can decide that i'm not attending so the public will judge them that at least the deputy president invited them to the meeting but they refused to attend so in my view the first thing is the fact that the deputy president wants to use this meeting to test the loyalty of some of these cabinet secretaries if they will not attend, then he will conclude that they will no longer obey him. That's number one. Number two, I think the deputy president is also using this meeting to pass a message to President Uhuru Mwe Kenyatta not to remove him from Jubilee Party. The fact of the matter is that on the 30th, Jubilee Party will convene its National Delegates Conference. And the main target of that conference is actually the deputy president, Dr. William Samuel Ruto. They want to remove Ruto as the deputy party leader, which means he will then be subjected to removal again as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Someone will go to court, whether being uh, stopping being a member of parliament, he still qualifies as the deputy president. So I think he's trying to convene this meeting just to remind the president that he's still the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya and that he's still ready to work. So in my view, he's sending a message. So whether the president is going to accept that message or not is something which for now I can't really tell. Number three, I also believe that the deputy president is trying to do something very cheeky. He's trying to sanitize current residence as official office. Current residence is actually the residence of the deputy president. But he's been holding both official and political activities there. In the past six months, current residence has been turned into a political stadium where all political activities take place. In fact, last week, the residents of Karen were demanding that the office is relocated from that area because it has been turned into kind of a political rally all every day. So the thing is, the deputy president, being a wise politician, is convening this meeting so that even those current residents will view this office as important. It's not only for playing politics, but for also discussing matters of national importance. And the moment these cabinet secretaries will go there, they'll address the rally. I mean, they'll address the public from the, the door of uh, the current residents. And Kenyans will believe that that office is no longer for political activities. It, it holds both political and uh, and uh, both political and uh, official functions. Remember, the current eviction party is coming. And this is the time, the time that David Murade promised Kenyans. So probably the DP is aware of these plans to evict him from current residence. So he wants to start organizing public events. I mean, both, both these political events and government events 
at that office. And number four, I think the DP is also out to seek sympathy. He wants to be seen to be performing his duties. He has convened a meeting. By the, to, by, by, I mean, he has convened a meeting, invited the cabinet secretaries. The cabinet secretaries, in their own wisdom, are going to abscond. And after absconding, nobody will blame him that the deputy president is just politicking from Monday to Friday. At least he will say that whenever I call meetings, these guys don't attend. Whenever I do this, these guys don't attend. So in my view, that is sympathy, seeking for sympathy. Because if it were not for seeking sympathy, why would he make it public? Because he knows so well that some of these cabinet secretaries, for one reason or the other, even if they were not political, some of them were not going to attend. But he's now saying, I'm inviting you, you are, not, you are not coming, then sympathy. I'm performing my duties, but you guys are rejecting me. You are not honoring my summons. Sympathy. And number four, I think the deputy president is also a wise politician. This could be a strategy to reconcile with President Ruru Kenyatta and his allies. Let me ask you, assuming you are Peter Munya, and you had been accused the way they were accused, that yeah, yeah, and fellow cabinet secretaries from the larger Mount Kenya region were planning to eliminate the deputy president. How do you even sit down with that guy to discuss politics or to discuss issues of national importance? There is no way. In fact, even in cabinet, I don't know how these guys normally sit because some of those accusations were very heavy. So should Peter Munya decide to go and attend this meeting, he will be able to raise his questions one or two. They'll be able to connect with the deputy president and probably they'll start softening their stance. The DP might have been decided to ask for forgiveness from Peter Munya and even from James Masharia. Then from there, they might, they might start reconciling. And for those who follow politics, you'll realize that the deputy president has changed his strategy for the larger Mount Kenya region. One of them is now to stop attacking President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. The moment you stop attacking President Uhuru Kenyatta, the strategy could also be to start stopping attacking the allies of the president from that region because there's no way you can stop attacking president and you attack his people. It doesn't work like that. So basically, he's seeking for reconciliation in a very strategic way. And lastly, I think the DP is also out to divert the attention of the republic from the upcoming Jubilee National Delegates Conference. Assuming this meeting takes place on a Monday, it will be headlined on Tuesday. Assuming it will be headlined on Tuesday and the four cabinet secretaries will miss, what will follow then is that William Ruto and his brigades will take that, that agenda to the public opinion and the public will start judging some of these cabinet secretaries so that the deputy president will be viewed as a victim, someone who is doing his work not receiving support, but is still they are still intending to remove him. So I think the DP is very strategic that through this particular meeting and by the boycott, the limelight will be now from the Jubilee National Delegates Conference to this particular agenda. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. And for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want to ask you guys to continue supporting the channel by giving the video thumbs up sharing the comments, sharing the videos, dropping your comments. And for those who have the capacity, you can go ahead and click that join button so that you can become part of channel membership. Rain Odinga is at the coastal region. And I can clearly tell you his new strategy. The deputy president is also camping in the larger Mount Kenya region again. At some point, he had started reducing his trips to the larger Mount Kenya region and he has changed strategy. So I'm going to, my next video is going to be on William Ruto's change of strategy for the Mount Kenya region and Rail Odinga's trip to the coastal region. Thank you guys and please, may you have a good day. Bye bye. Mzee Kibaki has turned 90. <laughs> so my father was older than Kibaki. The way my dad was very strong. <laughs> my dad died at 94. But those who know him say probably he might have been 97. But he was very strong. 
not like Ibaki. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.